I were in our living room here, and uh, it's I'm talking with my wife and partner Rolina, um, and Rolina, why don't you can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? What do you do? How do you fill your time? What have you accomplished? <laughs> I. I'm an artist and jewelry maker, wife, um, run the gallery, Lakewood Arts Gallery. Yeah. Mother. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been married uh, 35 years. And a lot's happened in 35 years, and a lot of life has happened. We've um, raised a, a son and acquired a second son and moved many times, and we've had many health problems and, and uh, watched our parents age and pass, some of them pass away. And we've, we've been through a lot. What is what is the last thirty five years? What has it been for you? It's I mean it's it's just life. That's that's what life is. It's changes. It's it's um, you know you take the good with the bad. You you don't you don't always know what you're gonna get and. Uh, you know, most certainly you don't know uh, what what your health is going to be, uh, and you just have to you have to roll with the punches. And I think that by far uh, my life has been um, I consider myself a very lucky person uh, throughout my whole life. I've I've had um, you know, I've had a, a lot of good things happen and I've had good companionship. Um, I've, you know, I've, you know, managed to support myself, uh, and, um, we've managed, as a couple, we've managed to make it through, uh, you know, financially and, um, and emotionally, I think that it's, it's been a good life. Yeah, it has been good, um, good and bad. Um, and they're not, I don't know if they're separate from each other. They're not, you know, they, like I said, it, it all comes together. You take what you get, um, you know, but I think the bad, the bad times kind of make you realize that that uh, the good times are even better. So um, art means a whole lot to you, Melina. Um, I mean, you can see it in your work and how much time you spend on it. And what is what is an artist? What how what does it mean to you to be an artist? Um, and it just. I don't know. It's to me. It's just about it's. It's about making something or from a, a, an idea all the way through to a completion of a piece. Um, it's it's kind of a meditation. I I I get a a, a satisfaction with some of the simple tasks like sanding or sawing. Um, you just get in a groove and, um, it's, you know, those things are very repetitious. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, it's, it just, it fills my soul, um, you know, just with beauty and, um, I do jewelry, so I, I like um, 
stones and I I don't like the stones that are are perfect and beautifully cut those are nice too and yeah uh, you know um, glitters glitters all wonderful um, but uh, I love to see um, jaspers and agates and with all the lines and the colors and um, you know just to think uh, that beauty is, comes from the earth and nature and um, you know you can feel the this you know and just feel the, the the spirit in them yeah um, I know there's a lot of uh, in those that meditation there's a lot of banging and burning and stuff that goes <laughs> on too <laughs> There's nothing like a good hammer to get your, you know, get your frustration out. So, um, you know, you get out the hammer and pound, uh, you know, pound a few pieces of metal. Uh, forging is, is what we call it. And so that's, that's always satisfactory. Uh, um, you know, I have uh, on my cards, it says plays with fire. And so I, you know, I do a lot of, uh, of, um, casting of pieces that are cast, uh, from just pouring it into, uh, sticks or into carved, uh, kettle bone, um, and you never know what you're going to get out of it, but you got a one shot deal. Um, so it's kind of fun. Yeah, you, it's fun having an artist around too. I love watching it. Um, and you're a manager of Lakewood Arts, right? Yeah, I started with Lakewood Arts six years ago when we moved to out to Lakewood. I was introduced um, to it by a friend of mine that I went to high school with, Christy, and um, and they allowed me to put my jewelry in to the gallery, and um, and then I was the treasurer for a while on the board, and now I'm uh, the gallery manager. I like it best. Um, it's this last year, you know, they, there's been three years of where it's been you know, really um, kind of challenging uh, between COVID and then we had to move the gallery. Um, but since we've moved the gallery, uh, now uh, we have, uh, it just seems like things right now are, are coming together and really working for the gallery. So that's kind of cool. Um, we're a, a co-op gallery, and so basically there's 31 um, artists that are are uh, running it and pushing it forward. Uh, we pride ourselves on um, being an affordable place where artists can sell their art and being a community where we can get together and and uh, celebrate in the art. Um, most galleries will take 40 to 50 percent and and we uh, take way less than that, leaving more money in the hands of the artists who create the work. Yeah, and going along with being a jewelry artist working with all these stones, I know uh, nature is really important to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I you know I love I love to to see um, and have a great awe of nature, the you know lakes and mountains and oceans, and I love my biggest love is probably the waterfalls. I love waterfalls, I like sitting beside a waterfall, hearing the roar of the water. It it just feels restorative to me. Just like it's, you know, washing over you. Yeah, it's a beautiful image. Um, 
So we have a 34-year-old, 35-year-old son. Is he 34 or 35? 34. 34-year-old son, Andrew. Um, what is being a mother? What is being a mother to Andrew? What has that taught you? Patience. Slowing to slow down, um, love. He's he's an amazing person. He's so intelligent, and um, you know, just just a, a really kind spirit. And it's just, he's really good to us. You know, and then there's, you know, Michael who came later, um, who became a friend to Andrew at, at uh, the school they went to and kind of was a part of our family before he was really part, a whole of our family. Uh, uh, later, he needed a place to to be and we said come and live with us and he became a, a big part of our family and we consider him our son uh, and he's a, also has a kind heart and is a good person and treats us very nicely he helps us a lot so we we are lucky we have two wonderful Wonderful boys. Yeah, we are. Um, so uh, we've both had some health issues through the years, but uh, can you tell us about the the story of when I came home when you were um, laying on the floor? So I I had I had for about six months before that I had been. Um, having a hard time breathing and I'd been to the doctor many times and told them I can't breathe um, and I uh, kept you know repeating it they'd done some tests they kept saying you know can't they couldn't find anything and they um, and then they finally just said y you need to lose weight and um, I knew that was not the only thing that was going on. I knew there was more than that. Um, and uh, I hadn't realized um, until until then that I had been having um, little um, pass out things where I I would I would cough and then. I would um I would kind of pass out and and um I had been had a coughing attack in the bathroom and passed out woke up you know fell and woke up and uh I crawled into the hallway cuz it was carpeted and there was more room and I was laying there you came home and said what are you doing laying in the hallway and I said I think we're going to the hospital so I was diagnosed with antiphospholipid syndrome and what was, uh, you know, I had blood clots, huge blood clots in both lungs. Um, and what was happening was um, there wasn't an, enough blood getting to my brain in, and when I'd cough, it would restrict it even more. So I would you know, basically black out. And that was scary times. I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was really worried about you. Yeah, it was scary, all right. I, I, I... Never been so close to, or so sick. <laughs> yeah, I remember, uh, um, Dealing with this while you were in a hospital um, and very ill, um, 
your place of employment let you go while you were in the hospital. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically they they laid me off, and so I ended up unemployed um, for about three years after. And that's one of those things that, that turned out to be a blessing kind of too, right? Yeah, it did, it did because when I when I was unemployed, then I, uh, you know, that's when I actually started making jewelry and took classes to to learn to be a metal smith, um, and so I uh, I had a kind of life forced me into slowing down and. Um, I had a lot more time to to do some of this stuff, uh, the creative stuff that I'd given up uh, after high school. So that was good. Yeah, yeah, and that place you were working was really a uh, yeah. They were they were they were. It was good. not a good job. Um, so yeah, things work out, I guess, some one way or the other. Um, I know that. Uh, Ancestry is really important to you, and, and genealogy, you, you spend a lot of time, it's one of your other projects you spend a lot of time on. What's that about? Yeah, that's that's my, that's one of my addictions. Um, I can I can go in and, and uh, start uh, looking for records and, you know, five, seven hours later, I, you know, can't believe I spent so much time on it. Um, I think that the ancestry and genealogy ties ties me to the past, ties me to to what came before, um, where where we came from. Uh, without them, we we wouldn't be here. Um, and um, you know, it's I I like finding more than just the the records the records just tell part of the story but uh i like trying to find information in the papers about their lives um to kind of know a little more about who they really were as people um, you know they they lived their lives and you know right or wrong what they did was a you know a sign of of the times and it's uh, you you can't judge them for what they did you just have you have to understand and and go forward from there uh, so it's um it's just it's this kind of revealing as to you know how maybe how some of our attitudes um evolve from where our ancestors were ancestors were well hopefully we've learned from some of the mistakes they made too well that's a lot a lot of it <laughs> yeah um so going back to art I, I know that trying to promote other artists and younger artists or, or artists that are just getting started out is important to you why is that? Why does that matter to you? Why do you reach out? Art, art is is uh, is is more than just uh, the creation of something. It's it's a very um, it's a very healing uh, process. It's good for people. Uh, um, to to do art to to um, and so to so somebody who is already into art um, needs to be encouraged because um, it's too easy to drop and to get involved with the the daily rigors of life um, and. Uh, to encourage 
other art, you know, younger artists or, or even artists that have just retired from, uh, from business, uh, to get back into it and to show their art, um, and to become immersed in it, I think is, is very important. It's, um, it can be, um, it can be a way of moving forward for people. It can be uh, healing for people. It's, you know, and, um, you know, you can end up with <laughs> a house full of art and then you say, what do I do with this? Well, that's what we're, you know, we try to give them an, a place to put it, uh, to, to show it, to um, sell it, uh, to be with other people who do art and um, just be community with it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what Liquid Arts is. I think it's just a community, a co-op. It is. Yeah. Um, so what do you what do you hope for in the future? Are you are you uh, optimistic? You know, um, what do you what do you think about what goes on from here? I'm kind of more of an of a here and now type of person than than a, a you know a future um, type person. I I tend to to um, take care of of what's happening now. Um, you know, I think a, there's a lot of things in life that have kind of taught me that that you can do all the planning in the world and then, uh, you know, there are things, you know, some things that are going to change that. And um, and if, if you don't just take life as it comes uh, and you have these expectations out there that are so great uh, that they let it throw you when they don't happen that way, um, it, it can be, it can be devastating to some people. Um, if you take care of the here and now, uh, most often things work out. Um, just do the best you can with what you are working through. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful thing to think we have control over our own lives and our and and the whole destiny, um, but I I don't think we have as much control as as a lot of people think we do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know uh, you've traveled a lot. You've been around the world a little bit. Um, tell us about being in Japan. So I w I, well, I went to. Uh, got an opportunity to go to Japan and um, to teach English and um, uh, because I knew a lot of Japanese um, in the college that I went to after high school and um, it, so I I went over there and taught English for a year and um, got to see uh, and learn about their culture, learn about, um, you know, the, the, uh, customs. I, um, customs I think are, are very important, um, because they, they, um, they kind of to tell you where you come, have come from. Um, they, uh, they tie you to uh, to your past, and they can uh, keep you going through the future. Um, I know another really unique thing about you is you finished your college degree, you got a <clears throat> your bachelor's degree at age fifty. It, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, I went back. So, you, yeah, I never finished it because I ended up getting married for the first time. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, at the age of 50, I went back and got a degree in IT, information technology, computers. Um, and um, never really used it in business uh, as directly as um, as IT, but um, I, I it sure gave me a, a big understanding of computers and and uh, and kind of help everybody with it <laughs> with their IT problems. Yeah. Um, well, is there anything you would like to, to say, um, to your, like, to yourself, to the world, to any, anything you want to add to what we've talked about? Not that I can think of. <laughs> Not that you can think of right now. Well, you've got a lot to say, um, and important things to say. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the time that we've spent together. And I love you, and thank you for speaking with me. Love you too, honey. <laughs>